enjoy the film. You want butter on your popcorn? The theater will be ready in a second. Do you guys need any, know anybody who uh, needs a dictionary? Um, my da- my dad asked me to ask you. Uh, well, I mean, oh, is business we, bad? I I have a dictionary. I have several of, of yeah. my father's works. I feel like at this point, everyone in town has multiple dictionaries. At least one. Mm, not the newest one. Though. Well, uh, well, but do what, you really need the newest one? Well, how are you gonna know what I'm talking about when I say like things like Putin to ham? Putin to ham? Mm-hmm. Spell that for me. Uh, P U T T I N D A H A M. That was pretty straightforward. Putin to ham. Putin to ham. Now, uh, I, I can't you tell can, you what it means. May, may make guess, a strong I, point. Should, you can guess, guess what it means. You can guess what it means. Yeah. You're not right. going to get it, though. Putin to ham. Uh, Putin to ham is when you have a certain meat uh-huh. from a pig. Okay. And you have to transfer it uh, somewhere. You have to you have to store it somewhere. You you're actually yeah you're spot on. Wow, uh, yep. really? nice. Yep. Yeah, if you're like putting the ham in the oven or something like that. You know? Yeah, it it means oh. that you're taking some meat made from a pig in the right. oven. Right. Right. Is did your dad invent this word? No. Are he doesn't you... invent any words. Then where do they come from? Visions from God. <laughs> So that's why every dictionary is co-authored by God. I've... And it's a little bit different every time. <laughs> My goodness. I think God is telling amazing. him to take a phrase like putting the ham <laughs> and to just smash it together and call it a new word. I... I hope my dad doesn't listen to this. Visions from God. Aren't you a Satanist? No. I'm a Semite. <laughs> but just... just... Just partly. Semi. You're just a semi, semi. I'm a semite. I we'll really want to make a joke with that. Don't do but it. But it might sound a little anti Yeah, I would probably be offended. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Why isn't your <laughs> nose shaped? <laughs> <laughs> nope. Yeah, don't don't finish <laughs> that thought. <laughs> oh, that was God. very... No, Greg, that was really good instincts that you knew that that was going to be the wrong thing to say yeah, i think man, we're, i really wanted to we're um, seeing progress yeah greg congratulations i guess well done thank you i will take at least congratulations no, it, yeah i do like getting congratulated I take mine back what no. No, you can't do that no you already gave it to me i'm no. not giving it back i took it back no kyle tell me you can't do that I mean, he Give can, me back my congratulations. It's an intangible thing. Like, it, it doesn't really matter. Well, then you can't get it back. Well, as soon as you close your eyes, I'm going to take it. Oh, my God. Don't do that. Greg, all right, you're getting, like, really upset about don't this. Don't do it, man. Your eyes are watering, like... No, they're not. I just don't want to close oh, my eyes. Oh, you blinked. No, I, I didn't. I took them. Oh, shit. I am baffled by every interaction between the two of you. <laughs> yep. Well... Um, let's go ahead and uh, get get going. Uh, welcome to the break room at the Cineplex. Hey. My name is Kyle. My name is Greg. I'm Henry. And we're going to talk about a film. Yeah. Uh, so this uh-huh. week... <laughs> oh. Is that your Elvis? Oh, thank you very much. That's pretty good. <laughs> That's not bad. That connects directly to the film mm. that we are... Uh... Mm-hmm. That we we watched, which is called The Life and Times of Elvis Prespin, Mm -hmm. (laughs) which was a parody. Yeah, a a parody on. Mm -hmm. uh, It's documentary style. It's like Presley and Has Been. Like, it's kind of the combo of the two. I think that might be. Has Been. Is is that one in your your dad's dictionary, the new one? Presbean? Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's when you you push push two uh, lentils together, you call it a a press bean. Oh no, we're talking about press bin. Oh, oh, that's no, that's not in there yet. We'll wait for God on that one. <laughs> we'll see if God we'll wants to tell we'll him to put that in there. Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, the life and times of Elvis Presbin. So it's a, it's a documentary esque. It's not actually a documentary. Yeah, right. And it's sort of parodying the life of Elvis Presley right. with this fictional character Elvis Presbin. Mm-hmm. Lots of mostly like live action where they actually filmed it, but then they also like, included some scenes actually of Elvis performing and mm-hmm. things like that mm-hmm. to kind of um, tie all the strings together. Yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. legitimize it. Right. Mm-hmm. 
Which they, they they didn't get the rights for those for those. That's why this this movie did not make it very long in the theaters. No, yeah, and this is a bootleg copy we got because you can't find this out there. They got sued. Yeah. Pretty quick. Pretty yeah, pretty fast. Where did you where did you find this movie by the way? This one this one was in in uh actually is at the library, the one the one library in Timberdale. Mm. Oh. I don't know if you've been to their forbidden movie section, but they have a whole I haven't been to the library. <laughs> I so, did not know that was a thing. What yeah. other movies do they have in there? Like like pornography? Yes, a lot of... It's mostly adult films. <laughs> and then The Life and Times of Elvis Prespin. <laughs> so what were you doing in that section of the library? <laughs> I was just browsing. Uh-huh. And I was like, this, this, uh, this was a VHS, and uh, it... Definitely looked like it was you know recorded from an old right, showing on yeah. television or something before it got officially. Right. Um, so like occasionally there would be those like fuzzes on the screen, little mm-hmm. like bars or things like that. Just mm-hmm. because like yeah. I don't think there were very many copies of this movie. I don't think a lot were made, and I don't think it made it into yeah. wide distribution. Definitely so. not. And I mean, and they, they like, were like I said, this one of the most probably recorded off a of TV. They they also had like like little bits of like when there was a commercial break, mm-hmm. uh, you get like a little bit of the commercial, but then it would cut right to the next. Right. Yeah, there are these right, like a, like a home video basically. Yeah. Someone had done this at home and then mm-hmm. It's it's what it, it was obvious that, that that they were playing a couple movies because at the end of it they have uh they have Arthur starring uh, Dudley Moore. Mm-hmm. Like they have like the just the first half of that movie right at the at end the of very the end. Like that they, they forgot to press stop on their recording. <laughs> right. Let, uh so let's let's dive in. Yeah, we will dive in head first. So, um this movie Starts off uh, in, um, mimicking the start of Elvis, where he where he got started as this young man in a suit and everything, and mm-hmm. he's on stage and he's you know he's got his legs doing weird things, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. try, trying to mimic. Right. He, he wasn't doing the the whole the whole rocking that Elvis does. It, it was more of like kicks. And, I'm not but sure, but he still had that voice. <laughs> yeah, they definitely had him just do an Elvis voice. You ain't nothing but a puppy dog. Like that was straight up ripped off. Yeah, they did some parody songs. Yeah, um, but the tunes were exactly the same, which is why I think they got uh, they got dinged yeah. pretty hard again. Absolutely. Yeah. Cause I can't help falling over for you. Yeah, they're also like, notably that was worse. Really close. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but what we, else we got? <laughs> Okay, so it starts out as Elvis <laughs> Presbyn, a little he's a man in a suit. <laughs> right. <laughs> and he's <laughs> he's kicking. And he basically comes to the realization that he needs to appeal to a wider audience. Mm-hmm. Yes. So he starts to write songs for old people. Mm-hmm. And he thinks, okay, this is going to launch my career. A little less young and vital, a little more elders, please. Do 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 do. I actually kind of like that one. <laughs> yeah, you were into that one. Uh, so, so he starts to. So yeah, the, he starts to skew his his uh, demographic more elderly. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he, um, he, he stops wiggling his legs. Yeah, he stops wiggling his legs He's, so yeah, much. Completely. And, 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 he, and he comes on out stage. on like a walker. And, and and he kind of wiggles the walker a little right. bit. But you know, but yeah. and, 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 things people can follow along to. Yeah. yeah. And all these seniors are, are going crazy. Mm-hmm. They're 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 fainting. Some of them aren't getting up. Uh, yeah. they're throwing their teeth at him. They, <laughs> and uh, he's he's you know he's he's becoming really successful. happy with the success yeah, that he's, he's got. Yeah, successful. his his plan to court the elderly demographic is surprisingly successful. successful. Yeah, he's 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 the next big thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He was the king of the the king of Walker Roll. That was it. <laughs> yeah, so so he's he's becoming more successful, and he's you know, uh, um, he's signing autographs, show, showing him signing autographs, right? And and, and being all being all, getting all sweaty, and dabbing on his, and throwing the towel into the audience, and mm-hmm. they're going crazy over the towel, right? And and, and uh, they they also tried to show, uh, they also tried to mimic his, uh, they tried to mimic Elvis's personal life by having him, you know, courting a bunch of different ladies. Mm-hmm. All, you know, well into their eighties. Yes, uh, yes. It goes on to basically his... Elvis's agent 
decides we need we need you to capture the younger crowd Mm -hmm. and he's like you want me to do what (laughs) and they're like the young younger younger people and he's like i like ladies in their 80s and he's like that's all i like and then (laughs) he's like that that's that's wonderful elvis but these people are going to die a lot quicker than kids will right and we're trying to make like like, a lot of money and we want you to be really popular Mm -hmm. and he's he's like oh oh and so (laughs) basically he decides to shift once again Mm -hmm. to try to capture the younger generation Mm -hmm. but i think he takes it a little too far yeah yeah he starts advertising and and promoting himself as the first great musician for babies right the youngest demographic he's gone from one extreme to the other in this case and And the agent is immediately like no that's not what i meant and elvis is i meant i meant like you know the the younger not like the youngest not yeah. not someone who can't can't buy cds or not someone who can can't come to your shows like and that's not like, a good well, maybe, audience maybe their grandparents can buy the cds for them and it's like <laughs> so you're still you're still trying to get you're the elderly get crowd there. you gotta go younger but not that young mm-hmm. not baby young not baby young ba- uh yeah hunka hunka baby love didn't didn't do very well <laughs> Yes, because the 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 infants couldn't purchase the the LP. Right, and he was he was still playing Welcome his shows at at senior homes. <laughs> yeah, he didn't change the venue at all. All shook up. <laughs> <laughs> that one wasn't good. Jesus Christ. <laughs> But anyway, he's playing these songs uh-huh. still at the senior home. And he's just mm-hmm. like, tell your great grandkids about it. Right. And again, the seniors think it's a big hit. Yeah. They actually really like the baby music. Yeah, they love the baby music. Which makes Elvis rethink his whole strategy. Because mm-hmm. he's clearly can only capture the heart of senior citizens. Yeah. And that's his one calling and that's what he loves to do yeah so 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 he really he really tries to uh he really tries to get the best of both worlds where he's he's making the younger demographic uh albums but he's adding in like like a couple uh um a couple for the older folks like a heart attack hotel Uh, (laughs) it's just just a little just a little nod to him being like hey i know you're still there stick with me and he actually starts doing the thing that a lot of of like metal bands were accused of, which is recording things on the track so when you play backwards, you can hear hidden messages. Yeah, hidden messages. <laughs> Thank you for staying around so long. You're my favorite people. <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> so his agent catches Wise, figures out that he's doing this, uh, and he cuts him loose. It's it, At this Elvis... point in the story, it's like, like in the 70s or something. Right. He doesn't have an agent anymore. Yeah, he he's doesn't have solos. an agent. He's kind of freelance. He's kind of overweight. He's he's basically just trying to to meet all the old ladies that he can. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's been his entire point of writing his music is to meet old old women. Old, yeah. Old, old, old yeah. Women. And so yeah. he's excited by this at first, but then he kind of realizes his own mortality and he's kind of frightened by it a little bit because mm-hmm. he's like you know i don't really take care of myself mm-hmm. well yeah. i don't really take care of him also and uh he kind of basically comes to the realization that like you know he's gonna die one day yeah right he's he's becoming his fan base right he's... and that's where his songs i think take a really dark turn because mm-hmm. he starts to sing about dying and death and like really you know morbid dark things yeah and so this movie ends the way any good Elvis movie should, right. which is yeah. Elvis shitting his guts out on a toilet. And, mm-hmm. and then faking his death right. and then moving to uh, Denver, Colorado, where he works in a McDonald's. Right. Mm-hmm. For in disguise. the remainder, you know, 30 years of his life. Right. And there's this bittersweet moment kind of right at the end there where he's he's manning the deep fryer, you know, right. mm-hmm. and then over the, you know, what the, the restaurant starts playing one of his songs. And he kind of looks up at the speaker, and there's a tear in his eye. And then a teenager, one of the teenagers he works with, you know, he's he's an elderly man at this point. Yeah. One of the teenagers is like, "God, this song, this song sucks." And Elvis says, "It wasn't meant for you." He's like, "But my grandma really likes it." <laughs> and he says, "You're goddamn right." <laughs> you should give me her home address. Yeah, her <laughs> and everything. Wow. And then the manager comes out and yells at Elvis and yeah, says, like, "Hurry right. it up." 
Um, and then the <laughs> film just kind of fades to black as he starts another batch of French fries uh, yeah. at the McDonald's. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really, honestly, kind of sad. It's, it's it really a is a bummer like it, of it, a film. It it was nice it followed up by Arthur though. I think that was a good conclusion. Yeah, that was movie. really nice. That kind of yeah, that kind of lifted the first half yeah. of Arthur. It's rich. It's rich kid. I like that movie. Yeah, I was Henry. At first, you seemed to think that this was a continuation of the life and times of Elvis Presbyn. Right. Well, I thought he had he had died and been reincarnated as a as a as a little boy. Mm. <laughs> as as the cycle continues. Wait, is that something you actually believe? See, like Greg, you're gonna be, you're gonna be a Grace. I'm gonna be a Grace. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. <laughs> Sorry, I don't I don't remember your name. Dude, <laughs> we've been friends since high school. I, re- I told you your name. I pointed at him. <laughs> oh, well, you know each other's names, right? Yes. You know my name, right? Yes. God damn it. I had it. That's, I had it. It was on the tip of my tongue. It was on the tip of my tongue. Kyle. It's Kyle. Oh, I was going to say, oh Grimsky. my God. What were you going to say? Krimsky? Yeah. You're kind of like butchering my last name, but... What's your last name? McClinsky. Right. Oh. Uh, that's what I was going to say. Shrimp Klimsky. Oh, my God. That's what we would call you in high school. I remember you that. You remember that? Don't. Do you remember that, Kyle? Yes. Do you remember us calling you Shrimp Klimsky? I do. Klimsky? Maybe that's why you don't remember my name, because you never used it. Well, what are you doing after work? Shrimp Klimsky. Shut up. <laughs> All right, why don't we why don't we go into favorite parts or characters or lines? Um Yeah. Yeah, uh, anyone uh, have one they want to jump in with? Yeah, I really um I I liked that fake uh news <clears throat> the interview. Yeah, right? that yeah. fake interview with him in his in his later years of his uh uh, uh, uh of his musical career when, when when you know he's wearing all that leather mm-hmm. and he's got the hair that goes up. Yeah. And he's saying how he's going to come back yeah. and everything. And then, you know, obviously he doesn't. He fakes his death like a week later. Mm-hmm. I liked the delivery of the of his lines where he's saying, my audience is going to come back. Oh. <laughs> and, and it's obvious that in his voice, he's saying, I, I'm not I'm not coming back. This, this is it for me. Especially with the, oh. Yeah, because when he makes that sound, he's shaking his head emphatically. Yeah, right? he's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, my favorite part was, what I, well, what I thought was really funny, what I thought they did a really great job with, was when he faked his own death, mm-hmm. and like basically he had had bribed like the cleaning lady and like the limo driver to basically get him out of the building after he like shits in the toilet. And then walks out and like the maid comes in. And she's like, oh, it smells like someone died in here. And then right. he's gone. He's long gone. Uh-huh. But they get the news crew and they get everybody and they're all and, just. And she becomes like the one who's like, yeah, he's dead. Uh-huh. And they're like, do you have any evidence? And she's like, she's I've like, seen this before. You've Trust seen, me. <laughs> you've, you've seen the ghost poop? The and, ghost poop. Right. It's either called the ghost poop or the terminal poop. And it's it's the name for the the shit you take when you die. Ah, uh, right, 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 right. Yeah. So, uh, uh, sorry, shrimp. Uh, what was your favorite part? Um, I would say that my favorite part, I mean, I like all the concerts that he does at the old folks homes. Um, yeah. it's kind of like this running, I wouldn't say a joke, but like a running, uh, a running bit where, where he's always trying to crowd surf. Uh, across this group of elderly people but it's like his, his crowds start out. off pretty small and so they'll try to lift him and then he'll just they'll collapse under his weight several will either be hospitalized or die yeah. um, and his fan base gets a little smaller a little ironically smaller every, right. every um, <clears throat> but as he gains popularity like eventually at kind of the peak of his career he does you know climb onto he doesn't leap into the crowd he's figured yeah. out that's not the way to go but he, he climbs onto a group of elderly people yeah. and I mean they they keep him upright keep him up there for a little bit yeah for for a, a good couple seconds mm-hmm. and it's like this blissful moment it's shown in slow motion so you can yeah so you can really soak it in so it lasts about four seconds mm-hmm. yeah because <laughs> it, it really was a very brief moment but i like that it kind of shows elvis Presbyn at achieving what he always wanted to which was to just completely own the elderly demographic yeah, to be on top of the world his world which his is world, yeah. old women mm-hmm. right 
he to was be like, on top of old women. Exactly. He's like, old women are my world, and I want to be on top of them. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, the life and times of Elvis Prespin. So let's... Elvis Prespin. Uh, how about we go into to ratings? Yeah. Uh, if I may. Yeah. I, I liked I liked the I liked the light in which they were painting Elvis Presbyn's uh, uh, character. I, I I liked it. I really did. Um, I think that um, the editing was shoddy. Mm-hmm. I think that the script was fine. Okay. I thought the costumes were wonderful. So I'd probably give it like a four, maybe a five for costumes. I, I, I mean, that was pretty in depth. You gave a lot of thought yeah. to this one. Yeah, I don't know why. Usually, you're just like, I don't know, maybe this. Yeah, jeez. I don't, I, know, I don't know, maybe an eight was. out of ten. Huh. See, I don't. Feel but like, I don't. Yeah, you didn't put like a lot of thought really, into that. I don't really, you know, I don't, don't have a horse in this race. You've said that before, and I feel like I'm put gonna a, say it. I feel like in the race. I feel like you're using eight out of ten as a crutch. What is? What do you mean by that? I feel like you're giving every film that we review, just, you're giving it just so that you don't have to think about it. A pretty just, good rating. I don't and... know. I don't know why you guys are doing like you're demonized. We're trying to help you. You guys are just. We're your friends, and we do love you not understand. You. I'm just the... trying to give this movie not an eight out of ten, so we can move on. Henry, we love you. We want you to get better. Why are you being weird like this, Greg? I'm I just... thought that's what we're supposed to do. I'm we're not launching comforting. into an intervention. The... Okay, well, I'm giving I mean, this movie an 8 fair... out of 10, and you guys can just, you know, figure that one out. Because right. I'm done talking about this. Kyle, okay. what would you give it? Um, I actually would give it an 8 out of 10. But with actual cause, I thought it was a uh-huh. well-made film. I liked all the performances. Uh-huh. I thought the songs, while clearly rip-offs of Elvis Presley right. songs, were, were clever. Mm-hmm. Right, I totally agree. Now, now you're Wait. just using my opinions to justify your own out of, out of eight out of ten, which which you don't even understand why you gave this film. I, it's it's just an eight out of ten. It's just what does that an mean eight out to of 10? you? Like, well, uh, eight, eight out of ten from Henry, eight out of ten from me, four out of ten from Greg, yeah, four or five. Mm-hmm. So eight, eight out of ten from me and Shrimp, and one <laughs> one Shrimp and then. <laughs> Shrimp Klimsky. Shrimp Klimsky. Shrimp Biscuit. Shrimp Biscuit. Ooh. <laughs> Kyle, you remember that one? I do remember Shrimp that Daddy one. Kane. Shrimp, shrimp Doggy Dog. <laughs> <laughs> At least All Henry right. was doing things that were the word pimp, right? That was the joke. Yeah, yeah now I get snoop. I get hit with the well, with a shell and now I walk with a shrimp. Alright, we're <laughs> just gonna <laughs> so What'd you guys think of Arthur? <laughs> The first, the first half, half was really good. All right, let's give let's give a number rating to the first half of Arthur. I I give it a I give it a nine. Sure, I'm right up there with you, man. Eight out of ten. <laughs> um, I, so if if you want to have us review a film that you suggest for us, you can email the title of that film or any details you have about it to uh, cineplexpodcast at gmail dot com, or you can tweet at us on Twitter at cineplexpodcast. Address it to Shrimp Shrimp Klimsky. Shrimp Klimsky. We'll know what you're it. talking shrimp about. Klimsky. Yeah, we'll get it. We'll get it's it. It's <clears throat> Kyle McClinsky. Let's. I'm just gonna wrap right, this a, up. Yeah, no. Yeah, I, thanks. Go ahead thanks for listening. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. I got all the shrimp jokes I needed. Uh, do you like dolls? You should get a Barbie and shrimp on the Barbie. <laughs> I know it's a stretch. Go to hell, Greg. Yeah, probably. There's, goodbye. There's, there's plenty of fish in the crustacean. I'm shutting off the mic. In the crustacean? You guys are the worst. <laughs> <laughs>